so loud. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, David. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hi, Nanette. Uh, oh, my goodness. <sighs> Sleepy. Charlie woke me up this morning to ask me if she could have a play date. I was like, it is 6.08. Shh, stop talking. Good morning, William. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to Coffee Talk. Um, morning, Mayor. Um, so yesterday my girlfriend came, my girlfriend Ashley came over with her twin girls and I got to spend some time with her twins and, um, helped her with nursing and helped her so she could eat and just like helped her. My sister had twins. I remember how hard it was. Well, I mean, I had, uh, I had Irish twins. Um, but I just remember how hard it is. Mary, my friend Mary, who's on right now, has twins. My sister has twins. My mother-in-law had twins. And I just remember uh, how hard it was. Um, hear and hearing their stories about how hard it was. And just watching my sister Meredith go through it. So I did whatever I could. I was like squeezing her boob, lifting one boob, baby. It was like, you know, it takes a village. It really does. And then last night I went out to dinner with a girlfriend. And there was a mom... Not like a new, new mom. It was her third baby. Her name's Emily. I don't know if she's watching, but she's super cool. Anyway, she let me hold her baby uh, last night while she and her husband enjoyed dinner. And you know what? It really does take a village. I mean, it just takes a village. Like, new moms, if you're listening and somebody offers to hold the baby so you can eat or go to the bathroom or whatever, let them do it. Let them take, give Give the baby to the person offering to hold it. Um, I wish that I had done that more. I really do. I wish that I had let people help me more, but I was so uh, just convinced I had to do it all myself. Um, okay, so I want to talk to you guys about t the teenage perspective. One of the things that people write to me most about is... They need help with their children, right? They need help with their teenagers, especially, or their preteens. And I want to remind you, I am not a therapist. If your child is exhibiting any dangerous behavior, take them to see a trained professional. Coffee Talk is not a, is not a supplement for trained professionals. This is just conversation, okay? But I do want people to understand perspective because I do think that it will help. Um, so I think a lot of times what happens is when children, teenagers, pre-teenagers are going through something like bullying, like issues with girls, like boy problems. Moms, our perspective is so different at this point. We've come through all of it. We've survived all of it. We know that in five years, these girls won't mean shit. So we give them that perspective. We say, ignore them. Why are you crying over this boy? You're not, this boy is going to mean nothing to you in two years, right? Why are you worried about these girls? Ignore them. Go meet other girls. Because our perspective is such that we have already been through the storm. We've already come through it. And we know these girls are going to be fine. We know these kids are going to be fine. They can't see it. They can't, their mind cannot understand 
what we are telling them. Their mind cannot comprehend, just ignore them. Just, this dude, this boy is not gonna mean anything to you in five years. That is so dismissive to their perspective and to what is hurting them. We wanna assure them that it's all gonna be okay. And I get that. I totally get that. But when you are dismissive, they feel like they can't come to you, that they can't talk to you. And that is the most dangerous situation for teenagers and their parents, is when the kids stop talking. My mother, now I wanna tell you this, y'all are gonna think that my mother is crazy and I get it, okay? When I would come to my mother and tell her that girls were being mean to me, my mother would say, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You want to beat them up? You want me to get your sister to come to school and beat them up? I'll have both sisters waiting at school at three o'clock to beat them up. Is that what you want to do? And I would always say, no, mom, that's not what I want to do. But I felt heard. I felt like my mother understood that what I was going through could not be dismissed. If my mother would have just said, Jamie, don't worry about these girls. Don't worry about them. I would have felt like, okay, she's not getting it. These girls are bullying me and she's not hearing me. My mom heard me. She was not the one. She would be like, do you want me to go beat up their mother? You want me to go beat up their mother? I'm like, no. And she was like, okay, so what do you want to do? Let's make a plan. I felt heard, okay? My mother's also a gang. She's like, my mother will fight anybody, right? So like, when my boyfriend in high school slept with my best friend, it was the most excruciating pain I ever felt. I remember walking into my house and my mother meeting me. I'll never forget it. She was not the best mother, but man, when Susan showed up, Susan showed out. I, will, I gotta give it to Susan. I remember calling her and telling her what happened and I could barely speak. I couldn't get the words out. And when I came through the front door, Susan came down those three steps into our foyer and put her arms out and I walked into her arms and I sobbed into her arms and she held me on the carpet in my house, in my foyer and she said to me, this is excruciating. This is the ultimate betrayal. Not only did you lose him, but you're losing your best friend in the process. This is excruciating. If she had said to me, if she had said to me, girl, this, why are you crying over this boy? This boy is not gonna matter to you in two years. I would have gone postal because what she would have been saying to me is the love you feel for this boy means nothing. The experiences that you have had with this boy mean nothing. I felt heard. She got down on my level. You know how when they say a toddler is losing their mind, you need to get down on your knee and look the toddler in the eye? What you need to do for your teenagers is validate what they are going through. I'm not saying placate them. I'm not saying allow it to go on and on and on. But what I am saying is look at them and say, what you, I absolutely understand what you are going through. This is excruciating. Not, don't say right now, don't say as a 16 year old girl. No, because that's unvalidating the validation. Just say, the heartache that you are going through right now is excruciating. It may be the worst pain you have ever felt up until this point in your life. And I am so sorry that you are going through this. Because the teenage perspective is so fragile. They so desperately just need to feel heard. You know what they're saying all day long? Just tell me I'm not crazy. Just tell me I'm not crazy. 
Just tell me I'm not crazy. With all of these hormones and all of these changes and all of these feelings, somebody tell me I'm not crazy. And do you know how painful it is to have your own mother, your own mother dismiss your pain? Dismiss what you're going through? As if it doesn't mean anything? These kids need to know we got them. We, I got you. My mother, man, she made sometimes spaghetti with ketchup and just some shit, okay? And she just was not always the best. But Susan always had my back. Always. She just always had my back. I can't explain it. Susan still has my back. She's still not the best mother. She still makes me set boundaries after boundary after boundary. But man, if I call Susan and tell her I'm feeling some type of way, she got me. Right away, she got me. That is my, that is my 150 ride or die all day long, Susan. I could call Susan right now and be like, I'm wrong, but you better flank it up the rear. And she would be like, I got you. Right? We need to stop dismissing our teenagers and our preteens. We need to start validating the way they feel. We need to say to them, I hear you and I got you. So whatever we need to do, we're going to do. If you need to make a joke like you, listen, one of the best things my mother ever did for me, I will never forget it. And I'm 40 was after Kevin cheated on me. And yes, I said his name and that's his real name and I don't care. After he cheated on me and I was so devastated, I remember laying in my room, this is real, Mary, you're gonna love this, listening to PM Dawn crying in my room and my mother knocking on my door and saying to me the 1993 magic words. Y'all ready for this? Susan said, Get in the car. We're going to do a drive-by. What? Susan, what? She knew exactly what I needed. There was no social media then. I couldn't log on to see what he was doing or where he was. You had to do a old-fashioned drive-by. And my mother knew that I was drowning. And man, if Susan didn't take me for a drive-by, what? We drove by his house, we drove back past his house, we drove by his house, we drove back past his house, then we drove back by her house, back past her house. She sat in the car and analyzed the darkness. She was like, I don't think anybody's awake. If she's awake, she got all her lights off. I was like, I remember looking at my mom and feeling like this woman gets my pain. And here's the thing. Susan went through her own heartache, right? Like Susan was madly in love with this boy when she was a teenager. And by, you know, it was a different time then. Like, it was just a different time then. And, and the way that she loved him and they couldn't be in love. One of those Hollywood stories where they weren't allowed to be in love, right? But if she would have said to me, like, I've been through this. I know the heartache. I would have been like, shut up, Susan. You don't know the heartache, right? Well, I wouldn't have said shut up, Susan, because she would have smacked my Daffy Duck all the way around my face. Remember when Daffy Duck uh, used to get smacked and his, his bill would go around the side of his face? That was Susan. So I would not have said shut up, Susan, but I would have thought it. What she did was she validated my feelings. She understood my perspective. And I think sometimes what happens is we want to, as moms, no, he wasn't black, Joya. Um, as moms, ooh, that would have been a whole different Susan though. That's a different coffee talk. Um, <laughs> oh, that made me laugh. Um, as moms, we want to fix it. We want to fix it. So it is natural for us to say, don't worry about this. This won't matter in two years, right? But that is not validating them. That is not telling them that they, that you understand and that you've got their back. What you're saying is, don't worry about it. It's, it's nothing. The pain is, 
nothing. All of this is nothing. And I just think that if more of us could get down on our knee and get on their level and say to them, this is real. What you are experiencing is real and it is a big deal and it does hurt and I got you. I just got you. I don't know how we fix it right now. I don't know what we do, but I got you. I think that is what's missing. Um, oh, Leah, guys, everybody, first let me say this. First let me say this to the mothers out there. To every single one of you who comments but Jamie, what do I do about my child? Let me tell you what a wonderful, amazing mother you are. Because worrying about your child is, like let me validate you. Let me say to all the mothers out there still trying to help their children. That we watch movies about warriors, samurais, Fucking gladiators, they ain't got shit on a mama who's trying to help her child. They just don't. Do people, I'm making this movie that starts shooting next week about this mother trying to save her children and the men in Hollywood are like, but will people believe that she would fight these men to save her children? I'm like, bitch, would people believe that she would fight these men I would fight a tiger with a bear strapped to his back with a sharpshooter strapped to his back with the Russian army strapped to his back for my child. And you want to know if people would believe that a mother would fight a man to, to protect her child? Y'all, you got me out here trying to believe in avatars and you and 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 and. Chewbacca's and shit, and you're worried if people are gonna believe that a mother would try to protect. Listen, I mean, these people are crazy asking me some stupid. I'm not validating that. That's just stupid. Jeez. I need that. I need the mothers to hear me when I say that if you are trying to help your child. I am validating you. You may not even need my validation, but I'm just letting you know. There is no harder, most excruciating, amazing job in the world. And when your child is not right, you can't be right. It's just not humanly possible because your heart is connected to their heart. Your heart just won't beat right when your kid's heart is breaking or when your kid is hurting or when your kid is struggling. So I see you and I hear you and I love you and I am here for you in whatever capacity I can be. So just know that I love you and I, I did this talk today to just try to give you something to think about because I know raising teenagers is hard. I haven't done it yet, but I'm doing, but I was a teenager and I was really bad. And, and I know what I put Susan through. So if you are looking for a way to connect with your child while they are going through something, um, let them know. I don't know who just commented it, but I love it. Let them know that in their life, you will be the first one to show up and the last one to leave. And let your teenagers watch this and let them understand, watch it together and say like, look, I got you. I don't, I don't, um, I don't have all, always have all the right answers, but I am validating you and I'm letting you know what you're going through is real and I got you. So if you need to do a drive-by or we need to beat somebody up, like, I got you. Don't really beat them up, no. 
I don't know if Susan would have really beat somebody up, but um, but she probably would have. I feel like it. Um, all right. So I love you guys so much, as you know. I have to drive to Atlanta today for a meeting about my new job that I'm going to tell you all about on Monday. Um, Leisha Perkins, you tell her I love her. And you tell her she better not say anything to you. Um, I love you guys so much today. Have a great, great day.